the space game has always had major players who spend no expense to win, while the USA, with NASA and SpaceX, has become a pace setter in innovation for the future in space, China's not far behind. Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX, has encouraged other companies to develop their own reusable orbital rockets, and China is taking him up on the offer. From the Chinese national space program to private companies, SpaceX's design of reusable rockets is gaining ground fast in the Asian country. The country has great massive targets to meet in space transport, and they have decided to incorporate some SpaceX-like technology to push them there. Stay with us in this video to know how China plans to copy SpaceX to further its cause, and also, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below stating, I subscribed, and we'll personally respond to your comment. Now, let's get right into today's video. Link Space, China's first private rocket venture, recently unveiled the design of its new Line 1 launch vehicle, which could compete in the future with SpaceX's Falcon 9. They also released a promotional video which was shared on the Chinese social network Weibo, which shows two different concepts for achieving suborbital passenger flights, about two decades from now. What is interesting about the videos is that the first concept looks strikingly similar to SpaceX's Starship vehicle. It shows a large vehicle capable of vertical takeoff and vertical landing. The concept's notable not only for its appearance to Starship, but its function as well. Although Starship has primarily been promoted as a vehicle to take humans to the moon and Mars, SpaceX has also developed a point-to-point -point concept. SpaceX first unveiled this Earth-to-Earth -Earth concept in September 2017. A video released at that time showed a suborbital flight time on Starship from New York City to Shanghai of just 39 minutes, and advertised the capability of anywhere on Earth in less than an hour. The point-to-point -point concept in the Chinese video showed a horizontal takeoff horizontal landing vehicle. It used some sort of electromagnetic catapult. Both of these systems are part of China's previously announced plans to develop global point-to-point -point transportation by 2045. Under China's long-term planning goals, the industry will begin delivering cargo around the globe via a suborbital flight system by 2035, and passengers by 2045. This would not be the first time that the Chinese space program has drawn inspiration from SpaceX. The company Spacelink also revealed the design and some specific technical parameters of their new Line 1 rocket during a conference. According to the images posted, the newly built launcher's first stage could include a landing system similar to SpaceX's flagship reusable Falcon 9 booster. SpaceX is very cool and Falcon 9 is extremely great. We take SpaceX as our goal and guide, because there are many advantages for us to learn," Hu Xian, founder and CEO of LinkSpace, said in an interview. New Line 1 is a small launch vehicle (SLV) and is designed for micro-satellite and nano-satellite launches and will also be capable of sending up to about 440 pounds into a sun-synchronous orbit of 155 to 342 miles. As with Falcon 9's boosters, the most important aspect of new Line 1 rocket would undoubtedly be the reusability of its first stage. The cost of a single orbital launch will be drastically reduced as a result of this. According to WHO, the launch price is about 30 million yen, 4.5 million dollars for each launch, with a totally new rocket and this rocket will have an enhanced version with increased takeoff weight. By reusing the first stage of the rocket, the launch price will be reduced to about 15 million yen, 2.25 million dollars. While the new Line 1 rocket has one reusable stage, the company plans to produce a second stage that can be reused after landing. Who aims to incorporate it into the successors of the company's first launch vehicle, even though it is a long-term target? Perhaps the later version, such as New Line 2 or 3, will have such capacity," Hughes stated. According to Hu, the new Line 1 launch vehicle will cost about 300 million yen, $45 million to construct, and the rocket's first flight could happen as early as 2020. Hu explained in 2017 that, "...the first orbital flight of New Line 1 is planned in 2020, which is an optimistic estimation because we know it's hard, and we plan to develop most of the core technology all by ourselves." such as a deep variable thrust liquid rocket engine, flight control system, landing systems, and so on. Linkspace is hoping that industrial companies around the world will be interested in the new Line 1 rocket. And according to the firm, the launch vehicle will also perform missions for the Chinese government. So far, SpaceX and Blue Origin are the only companies that come to mind when reusable rockets are mentioned, and SpaceX is the only organization that has successfully recovered a rocket after an orbital flight. Now, Link Space's ambitious plans indicate that SpaceX's reign in this area could be broken up in as little as a few years. The CEO also mentioned, 
We also believe that a good technical trend should not belong to a single company, and Elon has said that the reusable rocket is certain to be more and more common. In fact, a lot of similar programs are very different in detail. Although it looks similar in appearance, if you want to really make it work, you must do everything from zero to design and manufacture the whole rocket. While the government keeps its expectations high for the private firm, its government programs are also pursuing SpaceX-like innovation. The Long March 8 is intended to fill a void in medium launch capabilities to Sun Synchronous Orbit (SSO) and Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit (GTO) missions. According to Chinese media, the launcher can carry a payload of 5 tons to GTO and 2.8 tons to SSO. The China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology (CLAT) designed and constructed the Long March 8, which is intended to replace and update China's aging hypergolic families. The Long March 8 will also be used to test CASC's vertical takeoff and landing technology. This is clearly part of a long-term strategy to improve launch capabilities. So it is reported that the Long March 8R, according to animations of the flight profile published by CASC, will use retro propulsion to land on a sea platform. The rocket flew its first successful mission in 2020, and this has given China a much needed confidence boost. China revealed in February through Chinese television that it has optimistically endorsed the development of a super heavy lift rocket, named the Long March 9 or CZ-9 vehicle. The deputy director of the China National Space Agency, Wu Yanhao, said in an interview that the main purpose of the new rocket is for any crewed lunar landing or crewed Mars landing missions the country may undertake. According to Chinese officials, the country plans to launch the first satellite in 2030. And interestingly enough, this corresponds to a previous estimate of the timeline. China had set for space domination. The rocket would have a lift capability of 140 metric tons and be capable of launching 50 tons or more into lunar orbit. With a 10 meter diameter heart and 5 meter side boosters, it will be a massive vehicle. China also wants to make the rocket, or at least a portion of it, reusable in the future. The CZ-9 launch date of 2030 might seem a bit off, but it would be relatively quick compared to NASA's design and production of the Space Launch System rocket, which started more than a decade ago. The SLS rocket's initial configuration will have a lift capacity of 70 to 85 tons, and is expected to launch in 2022. NASA's rocket will only have a lift capacity of around 130 tons after two more significant upgrades, which are expected to cost about $20 billion and not be completed before 2030. Last year, China said it was considering developing a triple-core rocket that would look similar to SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy. This cast doubt on the prospects for the long-rumored CZ-9 Super Heavy Lifter, but for the time being, it appears that China is moving forward with both with the triple core concept set to launch in 2025. The rendering of that triple core rocket came to the public at the 6th Chinese National Space Day. Chinese space officials used the occasion to highlight the Chang'e 5 mission's recent return of lunar samples, which were on view, and also to reveal the name of China's first Mars rover, Zurong, which will arrive on the Red Planet this month. It's pretty safe to say that China has been spying on SpaceX from the beginning, however, Will they actually accomplish their goals on the platform of someone else's innovation? Do you think they can make the existing technology better? Let us know what you think. And thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there.